Sabah so, everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the iOS 14 beta 3. Just got pushed out to my iPhone SE 2020 and I wanna share with you guys some of the good things and something that's concerning me ever since I started doing the betas on my iPhone SE, specifically as there's a little bit, of, well, there's a small bug that happens every time I upgrade. We'll talk about that one and something that you should be aware of. But lastly, I also wanna share with you guys some great savings, some great deals from Aki for our iPhone SE or any other iPhone that you guys may be using right now. This is TK, let's go ahead and check out the iPhone SE 2020 with iOS 14 beta 3. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So what we have in front of us is those items that I talked to you guys at the beginning of the video. There's some really good discounts going on in the description below. I want to say thank you very much to Aki for sponsoring this video and uh, make sure to check out the actual headphones. The headphones are actually really good, selling for about 67 bucks. They have really good mids, really good lows, and of course, great battery life, wireless charging, USB-C charging, and of course, great connectivity to your iOS device. You can launch Siri, you can actually use it to be able to you know, listen to music and of course, record audio from them. Uh, the charger that we're talking about here is a great power delivery charger that's the size, roughly the size of the iPhone 11 Pro Max is charging, but it features two connections, USB-C and USB Type-A, and it charges up to 65 watts. Last but not least, a ruggedized iPhone cable that goes from USB-C to Lightning, and of course, to support that all is going to be an 8,000 milliamp battery charger with wireless charging that supports great connectivity and of course, a slim form factor. Now, when it comes to the iPhone and of course, iOS 14 beta 13, one thing that I definitely want to mention to you guys is obviously it has been an experience. And I say that because one of the main things that happens to me every time I go for one beta to another, so from the alpha to the beta and now beta three, uh, is something that the device for me keeps going into a restore function. So it installs the update, it downloads and installs it. But when it reboots for the first time, the actual iPhone goes into a restore mode. So for me, if you're considering going or trying this on your iPhone SE 2020, make sure you back up your device and make sure that that backup is very good and solidly put up on your on your PC. Uh, if you're gonna do it over on iCloud, make sure you have enough space there. Mine is run out. Uh, but after that goes through, luckily I haven't lost any information, but it's something to keep in mind. And specifically, if you end up going from the beta to the full version, when iOS 14 officially gets released in a few months. Now that I mentioned to you guys that concern, as long as you're okay and you back up your device, you're pretty much able to enjoy iOS 14 on your iPhone SE. Now, again, this guy starts at $399, so it's definitely a great way to get into an iOS ecosystem experience. Uh, the widgets are stackable and they're customizable. There's, this one is very nice. It's very unique. Uh, one thing about the widgets on the home screen, you are not able to snap them in the middle. You have to actually add them and they have to be specifically added um, on the left, on the right, or on the top. An example would be here. If I go ahead and go ahead and press and hold, and you'll notice there's a little plus button that's present at the top. If I click that, now we can see the different icons, the different widgets that we have available. If I wanna add something, let's say a clock, it gives me the different options for that clock that's available. Let's say I wanna be able to add that clock, not that I wanna keep it. I'll go ahead and add it, and you'll notice that the icon or the actual widget sits on the top left. If I wanna put it in the center, so let's go ahead and push the widget and move it to the center, it does not snap there. I cannot put it, uh, to the left in the center of any kind of experience. And of course, if I wanna bring it down, it has to be either on the right or on the left or on the top. So that's the main uh, requirement or at least the limitation that we have currently in here. Uh, not that it's a bad thing, it's something to keep in mind. The other thing that we also have here is something that looks almost, uh, I would say, uh, close to a, uh, an app drawer to iOS. And that's right here, the ability of moving folders directly into our uh, bar at the bottom. So I can create a folder from another home screen and I can bring it in, put it in here. And then of course I can put as many apps as I'd like and it becomes more of a page experience. Uh, this is definitely very nice and very user friendly. On the right side, you notice I no longer have other pages and that's another new feature with iOS 14. Um, one of the main things that I also saw with beta three is the battery life improvement has definitely gone up. It's no longer draining the battery at the rate that it was doing it back with the first and second beta. On the right side, what we're looking here is the app library. And this is something that is added. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and launch. This is in the jiggle mode. And if I go ahead and press the buttons, you'll notice that I normally have three pages as far as home screen. So I'll go ahead and activate the three pages so you guys can see them. I'll go home, get out of jiggle mode. And normally I have access to these pages before I get into that app gallery. Now with iOS 14, we're able to actually do one more thing. We're able to actually hide those additional pages. And what ends up happening here is this. 
every time I swipe to the far right, which now is actually the next page, it takes me to the app gallery. It customizes or organizes my uh, applications into different categories suggested basically on based on what I use. Uh, recently added, those are things that we've recently installed on our device, settings, uh, utilities, creativity, social media, entertainment, productivity, so on. And it's automatically organized. And if you don't like it and you want to be able to search, click the app gallery right there. And you have the ability of using scroll function search and of course, just get access to everything. Um, the next feature that I really, really like is the ability of using pop-up videos. So here I'm using HBO Max and you're able to only do it in a certain number of applications. Unfortunately, YouTube is not supported yet, but I'm pretty sure it's something that just needs to be activated on the system. And what it means essentially is that we have the ability of listening and watching content the normal way we've had and everything looks pretty much the same. But that nice little additional button that we have here. So I'll go ahead and start up the actual uh, video and I'll go ahead and pop it up. So what you notice right there is that the video becomes in a pop-up experience, so it's present as a floating window. If I wanna just be able to listen to it and not watch it at the same time, I can snap it to the left, swipe away, do whatever I need, and of course I can bring it back to whenever I want. I can also move it over there. If I wanna be able to change the size of it, size of it I can go zoom in, zoom out. Now, because of the small form factor of this video, uh, the screen, obviously anything that's bigger, shorter or smaller than just a full view becomes almost unusable, and that's because of the size of the screen. This is one of the small iPhones that we can use. So if you're comfortable with it, this is definitely going to be good. Otherwise, you click on it and you click that little pop up and you're able to go back into full screen. And of course, if you want to jump back, go back into window mode and it works really good. The benefit of having the A13 Bionic is the fact that this device can run and operate almost like an 11 Pro Max in a small form factor. Now, the next thing that definitely changed here is the interactions with Siri. Siri no longer takes over the entire page. And what that means essentially is that whenever you launch Siri, you'll notice it's an interface here. And now we'll actually able to get the notification or the information present as a small pop-up window at the top, which is also the way that normal calls will come in. An example would be, what's the weather like today? And it comes up with a little card at the top. If I want to interact with it, it works the same way. And of course, I can also do the same thing with the widget that we have present there. Very nice, very simple. And what I really like about it is I'm also able to initiate it using the headphones themselves. So I can swipe up from the bottom. Because we have a touch ID at the bottom, we don't have gestures, obviously. So this is one limitation with the iPhone SE that you need to be aware of. Gestures are not supported because of touch ID. But I'm able to press and hold. And of course, I can go in and see exactly to which pair of headphones I'm using. I'll go ahead and open it up. And I can just go ahead and remove the headphones so that they can connect and you can use them independently or together. Very good mids and lows, long battery life. And as I mentioned to you guys, USB-C and wireless charging supported on these and they're selling for 20% off right now for about $67. So make sure you check out that link in the description below to get the best deal on this. This little guy will charge your device using a USB type A with uh, the USB type C to a lightning cable that you have here. You'll be able to use that secondary port with PD. Of course, if you want to be able to charge up your laptop, your MacBook Air, uh, something that doesn't necessarily need a lot of power with PD as well as a USB type A, you're going to be able to do it there. Of course, that last one right there is the 8000 milliampere uh, wireless charger, of course, that supports power delivery as well as quick charge 3.0 on it in the same time. Now it has wireless charging, which means this is going to work directly with our iPhone SE 2020. All we have to do is put our device right there on the wireless charger. And of course, you guys could see right there the lightning option and you're able to charge it on the go without having to worry about it. And what I really like about it is the fact that it's actually very small and very thin and we get those additional ports that are present here as well as USB type C. We do have a USB, a micro USB cable on the side or a charging port on the side to be able to charge it up. Again, 8,000 milliampere, very small form factor and make sure to check out that coupon in the description below. And the last thing, of course, is the ability of customizing our entire experience here. So I can actually go in there and look at the different widgets. Again, similar to the one that we have it here, it's a stacked widget, which means if I press it, I'm able to edit the stack, edit the weather widget or removing it directly from the home screen. I can also add the different things. So here, if I wanna be able to move this, I can edit it, remove it, or of course I can jiggle it. So if I move it around, I'm actually able to move it and put it in the different positions, or I can stack them on top of each other. And at this point, I'm actually utilizing the space even better. I have two different icon, two different widgets, in the same spot, same same size, so basically a one by one, and of course, save space and makes everything organized. This is by far one of the best options that we've seen here on iOS 14. It's the organization and of course, using widgets to their full potential. I know a lot of us are probably saying uh, all of this is Apple copying Android. This is pretty much what we're seeing here. I feel like to a certain extent, yes, we do have some features that we've had on Android for quite some time that are coming here. Uh, the ability of adding, you know, folders, uh, the ability of adding widgets on our home screen. I mean, we do have a little bit more control on the widgets on our home screen on Android because we're able to put them in wherever position we want. 
on Apple, on, on iOS, the SE, or even the 11, 11 Pro Max, uh, the limitation is essentially either be it at the top, on the right, or the left. You cannot put them in the center. Uh, I do like the fact that we have a stackable widget, which I feel like this is something that we don't have on Android. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is it's a stackable widget with multiple apps or multiple widgets on top of each other, not necessarily one widget that has multiple features as part of it. So I've seen preview widgets uh, before from like uh, where we used to have them. So that's different. And I feel like Android can definitely benefit from that. The auto organization functionality on the right side is absolutely genius. The ability of having a somewhat of an app drawer on iOS is definitely very unique. So. Overall, experience with uh, the iOS 14 beta 3 is battery life is better, customizations are much better, less issues, Siri is working a lot better. Uh, there is also that additional feature that they talked about, which is on-device translation, which is also being rolled out that works really nice. Translation isn't fully working here. I do see that it needs a little bit more work, but there is that transition function where you're able to turn the device sideways and, of course, have a conversational experience where you're able to talk and the device detects the language and translates it into what you need. So a lot of cool things coming into iOS. But again, local translation isn't fully uh, working right now. Some languages are working to so English to Spanish. And of course, conversational translation works really good when you turn the device on the side. And that gives you the ability of actually initiating the conversation by just speaking and the device recognizes what language is being spoken and it translates it to the opposite language. So you can basically get a really good experience there. Um, so that is actually working. But other than that, I think there's a little bit more work to be done, obviously, before the official release of iOS 14. Let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of iOS 14? Do you think that Apple is finally moving in the right direction of giving people what they've wanted for a long time? And that's the ability of customizing their experience on an iOS device, specifically when it comes to their home screen, uh, their interaction with Siri, the ability of actually customizing widget on their home screen and just having them in the way they want. That, that stack functionality by far is one of my favorite. And of course, uh, that pseudo app drawer uh, app library that we have on the right side works absolutely fantastic. And of course, last but not least, let me know what you guys think of the new monitor that's sitting up there with the new scrolling options for Dragon Ball Z. I added that recently to the studio. It's been off for a while, but I finally got it running with a Chromecast. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much to Aki for sponsoring this video. And of course, allowing us to have all these cool coupons in the description below. Check them out and support the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.